Thank you, everyone, for joining um, uh, our talk and staying to the end of KubeCon. I hope everyone's had a really productive and uh, exciting KubeCon. Um, today, we're here talking about cryo. So if you don't want to listen about cryo, then you should leave now. I won't be offended. My name is Peter Hunt. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. I'm a cryo maintainer, and I'm a SIG node chair. I'm in with me. Hey, my name is Sohan Kunkerkar. I work at Red Hat, and I'm a senior software engineer. I'm one of the cryo maintainers and a SIG, uh, member of the SIG node. And today, we're going to be uh, talking about some cryo features, maintainers track for cryo, um, features for fun and profit. So um, to start us off, if you're not familiar with cryo, I'm going to do a really quick introduction. The, um, the sort of what, how we define cryo is a, it's a implementation of the Kubernetes container runtime interface, um, which is compliant with the uh, open container initiative. Um, containers and images. So what does that mean? You can imagine it basically occupying the same level of the stack as Docker used to. So the kubelet is going to talk directly to cryo to do all of its actual container image um, pod management. Um, because cryo is uh, focused solely on Kubernetes as opposed to a more generic container runtime, we get to make some like certain decisions about uh, how we design it. We get to purpose build for Kubernetes. We focus on security because we know the only use cases we care about is running containers in production rather than debugging or like you know building your containers. Um, and uh, we support all uh, OCI container images runtimes and registries. After so. Now that we've had a little bit of introduction, let's get into the fun stuff, the features. Um, first up, we're going to talk a little bit about some integration that we've recently done with SigStore. So for a, a while, uh, Cryo has had support for verifying signatures for images. So basically, when the kubelet requests Cryo to pull an image, Cryo will first verify that it's able to uh, you know, verify the signature with the registry. Um, and if it's not, uh, then you know, it denies that image is pulled. So it's happening right at the source, which is you know, an advantage um, to some of the other um, policy uh, uh, engines that stop you from um, pulling images. Um, the, uh, so it's enforced based both on image pull and container creation in case a container is shared, an image is shared, and we didn't actually do the repull. Um, but currently, it used to be only node level. So basically, every single image that was verified uh, on the node would always be able to be shared. But often in multi-tenant situations, you want to have different policies for different containers. We didn't used to allow that. Um, and so that's burying the lead a little bit because uh, or so, so this is the, uh, the, an example of what basically the um, policy.json will look like. So, um, you know, when you verify a SIG store, you basically have a couple of different fields. You have your um, issuer, and then you have the, your email, and then some CA data, and um, the recor um, key. And basically, so these are all the pieces that you need to sort of verify um, without uh, doing manual GPG signatures. This has been, you know, this stuff has been around for a while, so I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. Um, Something that we've added recently is in uh, Cryo 131, we now support namespace verification uh, for per namespace basis. So you can imagine that maybe you have some you know, uh, admission controller that is uh, creating different uh, sig uh, signatures for different namespaces. Uh, and so that, because in Kubernetes, often the namespace is the granularity of multi-tenancy. So, we added this support, so basically there is a path that you write uh, etsy uh, containers policy .com .d, and when you write it into that uh, I, of the uh, file name namespace.json, like whatever the namespace name is, then Cryo will go and verify against that namespace.json rather than the global one. So this allows you to sort of customize your uh, different policies based on different namespaces, which is pretty fun. Uh, next up, we're going to talk a little bit about a, um, an image uh, corruption issue that we used to have. So basically, I'm sure many of you have had corrupted uh, things happen when a, a computer or a node suddenly shuts down. Um, modern day disks often take care of this a little bit better than they used to, but uh, often you need to do some sort of repair loop to, in, when you boot up to make sure that your uh, node is in a consistent state. Cryo is no different, specifically with the container image uh, where the container images are stored. The, uh, we used to hit situations where when the plug was suddenly pulled from a node, 
the images would uh, come up corrupted and cryo would fail to start. It would take manual intervention to sort of fix. Um, in uh, 116, roughly, I, can't, I didn't look exactly, but a, a while ago, a couple of years ago, we added support for basically uh, preventing this case, but we did so with an incredibly uh, ungraceful uh, method, and I can say that because I'm the one who wrote it, and it was, it was not very good. It was basically, we detect that there was a sudden shutdown, and if there was, then we remove all of the images, which is very bad, um, and was annoying for a lot of uh, our users, but we sort of figured, you know, the, theoretically the cost of pulling the images while high, it shouldn't be overly expensive, like often there's registry sort of alignment with your clusters and, you know, um, so we thought, like, this is a good enough solution because we'd prefer cry to come up gracefully and pulling the images is something that will happen anyway. But obviously this is like a horrible solution, you know, for the long term for, and this is not a very modern way to deal with the situation. And it's an incredibly heavy hammer for a kind of um, small problem. You can actually see this is the code here um, that actually did that. And it basically was like, oh, we shut down uncleanly, let's just remove it all. So uh, I'm happy to announce as of uh, also Cryo 131, we have a more um, fine-grained solution similar to the game operation if anyone's played it. Instead of getting rid of the body entirely when there's one you know, body part to remove, we actually just remove that single piece. So um, in uh, 131, we have a, a new P API in our container storage library, which we share with Podman, um, to scan image storage, and uh, we can check basically, we can see all of these different ways that the images have uh, potentially changed from when they were first pulled, and uh, if anything is messed up with the image, we just remove that image rather than removing the entire storage directory, um, which is much more graceful and um, makes way more sense, and we should have done it from the beginning, to be honest. Um, so what exactly does it repair and what can it fix? So we have these basically uh, six different uh, components of the images that we check. Um, and on the cryos uh, implementation of this, we check most of those things. So we'll check layer digests, which makes sure that the diffs are um, so can reconstructable. We check that the images are mountable. We check that um, big data items are present and can be read. Um, and also we check that the size of the big data items, like the image contents are, um, they, they correspond to the recorded image uh, size that we know. And we also check that container data is uh, sort of uh, all set and similarly sort of present and like has the right size. We don't check one single piece of it, which is the layer contents, because that basically requires you to go through each of the individual layers and compare, like, you know, reconstruct the, um, the, the SHA of the layer and then compare that against what we have stored. And that's a pretty expensive operation, especially when you have large images or uh, images with a lot of content or a lot of like small files. So uh, unfortunately, we don't have that. Luckily, in those cases, the image like storage will come up. So it's not like we have a corruption that will uh, break the node, but it is a corruption that would, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, it is a corruption that, uh, would like affect your running workload because you're running something different than you expected. <clears throat> in the future though, a way that we can address this, the layer contents problem is with a project that will be soon to be donated to um, the CNCF, um, ComposeFS, which is a file system that's designed to run OCI uh, you know, images um, on nodes. And basically one of the things that it gives is um, FS Verity support so you can verify that the contents that you have on this um, read-only file system are the same as the ones that you pulled originally. So on boot up, the um, trying to read from these file, this uh, a corrupted uh, content file will actually just fail. Um, so that'll be pretty cool. I'm gonna pass off now to Sohan to talk about a couple more features. Thanks. Oh. Hello. Thanks, Peter. So let's uh, shift our gears and talk about something important for Cryo. So recently we uh, merged one change that is defaulting to CRN as the um, container runtime. So let's discuss about uh, the history behind that. So Cryo uh, is always made for high performance and efficient uh, container runtime interface. So what really happens is like, you know, Cryo users can switch between RunC and CRN. And uh, with RunC as being the default one uh, because of stability and long-term support from um, the Kubernetes ecosystem. 
However, with recent Runcy issue, uh, we uh, it was like a game changer for us. So with Go 1.22 and uh, Runcy and glibc, it created a breaking issue for someone who is actually using uh, Runcy uh, in their production system. So what really happened, and I already uh, shared this uh, issue, but what really happened in the background is with Go 1.22, there was a change in the way thread IDs were uh, assigned, and uh, the G, uh, and it basically conflicts with G, uh, glibc's system allocation. And that is something which is triggering a problem while allocating thread IDs. And that's where, um, you know, uh, in the production team started uh, looking for a better option, like they're looking for a temporary solution or move, uh, downgrading their Golang versions to make sure Runcy works in general. So that's where, um, you know, uh, Runcy's compatibility was something uh, which was like a wake-up call for us because Runcy's reliance on uh, Go will eventually uh, trigger a system level uh, you know, disruption. And that's where C run comes into picture, where um, it's written in C, and it has you know, uh, multimodal uh, ABI, ABI support and mature ecosystem. So this particular incident uh, made us realize that they, we need to kind of uh, think about this container runtime in a better way where it not only uh, supports our needs, but also robust against any uh, tool chain and languages. So if you see C run, it's, it's, it, it is efficient, it is actually uh, gives you high, perform, uh, high performance. At the same time, it, uh, it follows uh, cryo's core principles, that is high performance and uh, efficient uh, utilization. Now, um, as we discussed, C run uh, is based on C's uh, architecture. Which, which makes it more efficient and it also um, eliminates the Go specific issues. With C, we can act uh, with um, uh, C in the background. We can um, have a smaller footprint, faster uh, startup times, and uh, a smaller binary size. So all these characteristics enable C run as a good candidate for high density and um, resource uh, constrained environments. So uh, apart from uh, running on Kubernetes. CRN also support uh, support couple of other features. So uh, with confidential computing, edge computing, and workloads like WebAssembly, we are trying to tap that market where um, CRN is actually uh, you know uh, uh, supports modern uh, capabilities. So I would say Golang issue was just a uh, just a catalyst, but the main uh, thing that uh, drove us to change to CRN was its efficiency and supporting modern capabilities. You can also see uh, CRUN supports cgroup v2 by default, which, which is like the latest Linux kernel feature. And um, we haven't done this change haphazardly. So before making this change, we took our cryo communities uh, users uh, into uh, confidence. And we uh, took a poll. And uh, based on the poll results, we made this change. And if you see, for most of the users, um, this will not be a breaking change. So recently, we uh, came across this issue, cryo issue, where someone moved to a different version, and they had CRN in the background. And uh, they started hitting issues while creating a container. But that was something which is like a bug in CRN and not uh, specific to cryo. So I guess um, the CRN is something uh, is the future as far as uh, the cryo project, project is concerned. Now, let's understand the performance and resource usage uh, between CRUN and RUNC. So you can see CRUN is, uh, um, uh, is as fast as RUNC, like twice as, as fast as RUNC. You can see on the right-hand side um, the table where we're trying to uh, create 100 containers. And you can see the delta between the two, uh, CRUN and RUNC, like how much time it requires. Since we are using C-based architecture for run, uh, CRUN, um, the memory usage for CRUN is pretty uh, minimal compared to RUNC. You can see the difference, 3 MB versus 15 MB. And uh, about the binary size, it's, it's uh, 500 KB versus um, RUNC's 14 MB. Now, on the right-hand side, you can see uh, we are trying to run uh, two things, like uh, you are trying to run containers with two different uh, runtimes, the one with RUNC and second with uh, CRUN. For CRUN, it takes as minimal as a 512 KB of um, memory to run a container. But if you see for RUNC, 
for 4 MB itself, it's failing. So uh, when we talk about the resource efficiency, CRN containers can run uh, with lower memory uh, limits. And uh, CRN also requires only single uh, PID to run, unlike Run C, because of its Golang um, thing, and it requires minimum five PIDs. Apart from that, uh, if you talk about the use cases, uh, it is ideal for edge computing and uh, IoT because of its low um, resource consumption. At the same time, uh, it is better um, suited for high-density container deployments. Now that we made this change, uh, and it will be available in Cryo 1.32, we want to make sure that uh, we should be covered uh, no, uh, in CI. So we added a bunch of uh, cryo jobs to make sure whenever someone uh, creates a pull request in cryo repo, it should run against a couple of CRN jobs. At the same time, we don't want to diverge from the upstream Kubernetes uh, node suite. So we also added this periodic job that will run every, um, every day to make sure um, it ensures the Kubernetes compliance and stability. So with this, uh, let's uh, s uh, switch to you know, something important and the upstream uh, uh, cap that we are talking about, <clears throat> the image volume source. This feature is exclusively available for Cryo right now, and there's an effort to, uh, to uh, available this in, in the uh, other uh, container runtime implementation. So why do we need this feature? Let's understand the history behind that. So as AI and ML models um, and their dependencies become more and more um, sophisticated, team often needs uh, some kind of uh, judgment challenges to manage and deploy AI models, and which also requires configuration files and um, dependencies. So typically, this requires, you know, uh, as an end user, they basically go for sidecar, sidecar containers or manually uh, you know, deploying those models or they'll basically go for some work around, and that would be an overhead. So uh, this image volume source in Kubernetes 1.31 helps you mount OCI image as a uh, native uh, volume source within the pods. So what it does, it basically allows any uh, ML and AI applications to share the ML and uh, data content across the containers within the pod. No, currently, this feature is alpha in 1.31, and you can enable this feature using the feature get called image volume. As we discussed, like you can use OCI mount to make sure uh, you, know, uh, you can uh, mount uh, volume source uh, inside the pod. And apart from supporting the uh, AI and ML use cases, it also extends the Kubernetes um, capab capabilities in general. We'll discuss that in the later slides. And it also allows for mounting OCI objects directly into pods. So on the right-hand side, you can see the pod spec, where uh, under volumes, uh, we've added this field called image, and you can provide the reference uh, of the OCI image, and the pull policy is uh, something which is already there in the Kubernetes. So we are pretty much, pretty much using all, all the stable Kubernetes features here. All right. With this, uh, let's understand the use cases. So we already covered AI and uh, ML models. Uh, apart from those use cases, it can be also utilized in uh, sharing configuration across multiple uh, containers. And um, one thing we can realize probably um, as a security engineer, if they want to uh, separate out uh, malware signatures from scanner software, they can definitely utilize this uh, feature. So if you see the earlier pod spec, uh, some of the uh, key features there is like, it's actually utilizing the ex existing container image pool mechanism, where it supports uh, various pool um, op policies, which are already there in the Kubernetes um, uh, spec. And uh, last but not the least, it also integrates the existing um, uh, secret management uh, for image pooling. So, so basically, if someone wants to you know, export or uh, try to um, create any AI model and they want to um, secure that data from the end user, they can actually make use of the secret management um, feature from Kubernetes. There are a couple of limitations uh, with this feature that uh, I feel they're going to cover or probably try to work out as this feature uh, progresses to beta. 
The first one is subpath mounts. So subpath mounts within the image volume uh, are not supported currently. So uh, what does that mean? So you can't mount a specific directory uh, within the image. So you have to actually use the entire image for that. And second thing is FS group change policy. So with FS group change policy um, setting, which controls the permissions for, uh, for shared volumes. So this feature is not supported with uh, image volume source. And uh, so it might impact uh, the setup where someone wants to uh, you know, uh, provide a user or group permissions for, for, for the mounted uh, files. So with this information, it's time for some demo. So what we're gonna do here is like, you know, uh, we discuss about CRN change, uh, and we are going to use this um, cap, like uh, the image volume source feature. So uh, in this case, I'm going to use wasmh as the handler to run AI models locally. And for that, there's a uh, project called Llama Edge. So uh, if you want to learn about the exact steps that you need to uh, run this demo, you can uh, scan this QR code and get the details. So let me go ahead and um, play this video. Where do you see the cursor? It's in the middle of here. Go to the side, I think. There you go. Okay. All right. All right, so uh, what we are doing here is like, uh, I have a, um, I'm going to use cryo as the container runtime, where uh, here is the cryo config for, it's going a little fast. Yeah, so um, in the cryo config, I'm going to mention CRN Wasm. So under the hood, uh, we are using Wasm H as the Wasm handler. Uh, uh, so let's go ahead and um, spin up the cryo instance. Uh, now we can see cryo instance up and running. For Kubernetes, uh, before uh, spinning up the cluster, we need to make sure that image volume uh, feature get is on by default. And let's go ahead and create that cluster. It will take some time. All right, I think the cluster is up and running. So uh, let's go ahead and um, look for the container file that I'm going to use to create an image. So in this case, let me just pause here for a bit. Oops. So I want to show you this container file where we are using a couple of settings. Um, yeah, so uh, since I'm using WASMH and Llama specific uh, model, there are a couple of environment variables we need to set to make sure uh, that model gets loaded in the runtime. And this is a scratch image, so I'm just trying to kind of uh, copy that into the respective directory. All right, uh, so this. Okay, uh, so I've already created that image. Let's go ahead and uh, inspect that image. And we need to uh, set the architecture and OS for that as WASI and WASN. So you can see, um, yeah, the architecture and OS for that is uh, WASI, WASM32. And Cryo does support WASM um, natively. You just need to change a few settings there. Now, um, Kubernetes and app and running, we have, let's see the pod spec. So in pod spec, uh, let me just quickly stop this one. Okay, where is the cursor? Yeah, can you just stop the cursor probably? Uh, yeah, no, just little, like I, I want to show you uh, the pod spec, so probably they will get some idea. Uh, little behind, probably. A uh, little behind, no, I think little behind. Where I'm showing the pod spec. 
Yeah. So uh, in this case, as I mentioned, uh, where I'm trying to use uh, the image reference. So the WASM AI model where I'm trying to use ORUS uh, registry to um, send the AI model as an artifact. And um, as I mentioned, the container images where I'm trying to kind of, or uh, uh, copied the Llama CM WASM file. Uh, with this, I'll, I'll just try to uh, apply this pod spec, and hopefully it should create a pod for us. I mean, it already created, that's why we have this demo. So um, you can see the pod is up and running. We can uh, then attach that and try to um, ask a few questions to the bot. I say hi, and the bot should reply. It will reply, it will take, say, take some time because we are using CPU and that, not GPU. All right, there we go. Cool. So, um, so in this case, as you can see, like uh, we not only use image volume source uh, as the feature, we also use uh, CRUN, WASM, and Llama H to basically um, deploy AI models locally and query the bot. All right, um, so we have a couple of things um, as far as Cryo is concerned. Uh, you can go through our Cryo's feature roadmap to understand what we are working on. And here are some upcoming highlights that I want to uh, portray. So something like the first thing is WASM plugins loaded directly into Cryo that we are actively working on. There's a POC already up and uh, in Cryo repo. Then we are thinking about handling WASM uh, workloads as container images. Uh, we are still in that process to uh, design uh, that uh, in general. And uh, we are also thinking about adding lazy pull image use case in Cryo. You can also scan this barcode to get the uh, Cryo feature roadmap. So with that, um, reach out to us on GitHub and Slack, and we need more contributors. And we have a couple of GitHub issues which are already listed as a good first one. So if you need any help with that, we are here to help. And yeah, with that, I want to thank you for joining this session. This last QR code is for feedback, which we'd happily take if you have any. Um, and in addition to that, uh, we'd also take any questions if you have any. No, it does not. Uh, you'd have to run it in a VM. Cryo is currently Linux only. We are working on adding support for FreeBSD, but that's not Mac. Um, the, 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 the object of it is to run containers in production, and usually that's happening on Linux. We also don't really have Windows support, um, but yeah. Don't worry about Windows. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Yeah, so the, um, for, la for lazy pull images, so we're integrating with um, Star GZ, which is also being supported by ContainerD. So we currently do have support in our underlying container storage library. So it's really just a matter of integrating um, with the, uh, with Cryo. And specifically, there's a couple of pieces that are missing. Like there's, um, similar to the image corruption check, like we need something to check at the beginning of a node startup that like the, uh, that the storage is consistent at startup. So there's a piece that's being added right now. Um, there's a, someone from NTT Kohei is um, working on um, the implementation and uh, who is, he's, I think, the main maintainer of StarGZ. Um, yeah. Other questions? Great, thank you everyone for joining.